Hi, Physics 211 students. Uh, I'm hoping to record video solutions of every recitation, homework, practice exam, everything problem that we do. Uh, this will be a lot more helpful to you than just some uh, static PDF that I can send you since I want to solve the problems in real time, talking through what I'm thinking about, talking through um, how I'm approaching them, and hopefully this will um, give you a guide on how to think about some of these things. I'd really appreciate any feedback you have for me on how this works. Uh, even, you know, things as simple as, could you turn your microphone up? Um, I've had to very quickly buy a tablet computer, get set up to make these, get a whole bunch of, of software I've never used before. I've actually never used a tablet computer before. Um, so let me know if there's anything that I can do to make this more useful. And I promise that my handwriting with the stylus will get better uh, as we progress uh, through these next six weeks. So let's get started. Uh, in this problem, uh, we have somebody dropping a penny off of the Empire State Building. Uh, so it's going to travel down, uh, hit the ground uh, at 50 meters per second. Now that's very fast. Uh, gravity is accelerating it as it moves down. Uh, in our, um, This is the unit on work and energy. So one way to think of this is that uh, gravity is doing positive work on the penny, um, making it go faster and faster, increasing its kinetic energy as it falls. Um, but air drag is also pushing it back upwards, um, reducing its kinetic energy. So just to make clear our notation, um, we know the mass of the penny, which I'll label as m. We know the height of the building, which I'll label as h. And we know um, the final velocity with which it hits the ground. Uh, we also know that uh, it was dropped from rest, so we know that its initial velocity is 0. So we can use the work energy theorem to figure out uh, how fast it's going when it hits the ground. Um, the work energy theorem just says that the work done on something is the change in its kinetic energy, and the kinetic energy depends only on something's speed. So if we're looking for its speed when it hits the ground, then um, finding its final kinetic energy gives us what we want. So the work energy theorem says that the initial kinetic energy plus the work done by all forces equals the final kinetic energy. But in this case, the only force uh, applying or doing work on the penny is uh, gravity. There's no air drag for part one. Sorry, I'm adjusting my headset. So we know that the, uh, the formula for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. Uh, and since the penny is not moving at the beginning, I know the initial kinetic energy is 0. So this means that no initial kinetic energy plus the work done by gravity is equal to the final kinetic energy. Now, in thinking about the work done by gravity, gravity is pulling it downward. Uh, it's moving downward, so the work done by gravity ought to be positive. Uh, work is force times distance. So this is just the force of gravity. Come on, stylus. F grav times h, which is mgh. You'll see that expression come up quite a bit um, for the uh, work done by gravity. You will need to think carefully about whether it's positive or negative, though. Um, so putting that in, this gives me that mgh equals 1 half mv final squared. Doing a little algebra, this tells me that v final is square root 2gh. Uh, now we need to do a calculation to figure out how big that is. Oh no, I have the wrong window on top. There we are. So I'm going to do my calculations in a um, little Python window. So let me start this again from fresh. Sorry, I didn't have this ready to go. So we'll invoke Python, import the math library. Let's see. So the math mass is 0 0.0025 grams, I'm or 0 0.0025 kilograms. I'm sorry. I'm going to do everything in the standard SI units, 380 meters, and the final velocity. Or excuse me, I'm, um, the final velocity which we'll use later. Uh, the real final velocity that it hits with, the one with drag, is 50 meters per second. I also need to remember that g is 10. And now, 
if I'm looking for the, um, oh no, my window is off the screen. Ah, that would make that make a bit of difference here. Um, now, if I'm looking for the final velocity without air drag, that's for part A. Then we want to print the square root of two times g times h, which is 87.2 meters per second. So that's very fast. Uh, but we know that it really only goes, or it was only going at 50 meters per second when it hit the ground. So this value, the 87.2, is what you'd get if you did this on the moon. But on Earth, where there's drag, we get a much lower value of only 50 meters per second. We'll again use the work energy theorem here. Instead of using it to solve for a velocity, since we know both initial, final, uh, initial and final velocities, now we'll use it to solve for the work done by the drag force. So let me write out the work energy theorem again. This time I've got two forces doing work, plus the work done by gravity, plus the work done by drag, which is what I'll be solving for, equals the final kinetic energy. As before, I know that the initial kinetic energy is zero. Um, so let me now um, put in the things that I know. I know that um, I'll go up there. Still learning how to use this program. Uh, now we know that the um, the work done by gravity we already figured out is mgh plus the work done by the drag force is the final kinetic energy, which is 1 half mvf squared. So that means that we can just solve for the work done by drag. Let me enlarge this just a little bit so my handwriting gets bigger, or gets better. Uh, the work done by drag is 1 half mv final squared minus mgh. Um, this is kind of what you'd expect. Uh, 1 half mv squared is the uh, kinetic energy that you'd expect at the bottom. Or the, excuse me, 1 half mv squared is the kinetic energy you actually have at the bottom. And mgh is the work done by gravity. If there's no air drag, as we saw in part A, those would be the same. But they're not the same. And the work done by drag is going to be the difference between the kinetic energy at the end that you actually have and the kinetic energy at the end that you would expect if there's no drag, which is just the work done by gravity. So now going back to my uh, calculator window, we want to print 1 half times m times v final squared. So a double star uh, means exponentiation in Python minus m times g times h. And I get a negative number. This is what you expect, since this thing is falling downward. Um, air drag pushes it upward, but it's moving down. So we expect air drag to do negative work, because it's a force in the opposite direction of the motion, and also because it slows something down. Uh, so when I um, did the math, this was minus 6.375 joules. Joule is the SI unit of work or energy. So that's part B. Now part C says uh, this hits the ground. It's going to dig a little hole in the ground when it hits, and the ground is going to very rapidly bring it to a stop with an enormous upward force. Um, so in that motion, um, Well, we have a choice. I'm gonna, I, I didn't leave myself room here to draw some diagrams uh, in the upper part, but I'm going to draw some diagrams now. So one of the things that I want to emphasize uh, in doing these problems is that you need to draw clear before and after pictures. So I'm going to draw a couple of cartoons here. Um, we 
looking for something on my tablet here. There we go. So in the beginning, we had a thing up here with velocity zero. This is, uh, we'll call it position A. It gets sat down here to the bottom with some speed v final. And then finally at the end, it is down inside the ground. It's dug a little hole of a depth two centimeters. So we'll label these two positions as B and C. So that one will be B and that one will be C. Whoops, I'm off the screen a little bit. Um, we're going to need to use the depth of the hole here. Uh, I'll use the letter D for it. So if I'm trying to figure out the uh, upward force exerted by the pavement um, on the penny, I can again use the work energy theorem, this time taking advantage of the fact that it comes to rest. Here I'm going to be looking at uh, the work energy theorem as I go from position B to position C. So at B I have um, some velocity, I have a large kinetic energy, but at C I am not moving. So writing down the work energy theorem here, I have 1 half mv initial squared plus the work done by the ground. Headset keeps falling off, sorry. Um, plus the work done by gravity equals 1 half mv final squared. Final. Again, I am just now learning to use this tablet. I will get better, I promise. Um, one of the things, though, we know that the final velocity is zero, so there's no kinetic energy at the end. And we also know that the work done by gravity as it moves down those two centimeters is very, very small. This is the hint. Think carefully about whether you need to worry about the work done by gravity as it moves those two centimeters. That's so small that we can ignore it. Uh, the initial velocity, I know, it's uh, the velocity at B. Uh, actually, let me change my notation here. Um, it's important to have clear notation. So I'm going to call this uh, the velocity at B, which we know is 50 meters per second. Again, using initial and final is sometimes a little bit um, deceptive because you can get confused about what your initial and final states are. So again, um, I need to figure out the force from the ground. So the work done by the ground, again, is just force times distance. But here, the normal force of the ground as it brings the penny to rest is pointed upward. The distance moved is downward. So the work done by the ground, this is going to be minus, whoops, minus the normal force times d. So putting everything in now, I have 1 half mvb squared minus the normal force times the distance. Again, that normal force is what I'm trying to find equals zero. Now all there is left to do is to solve for that distance. So I have oops, um, the distance is going to be, excuse me, not the distance, I'm supposed to solve for the normal force. The normal force is uh, 1 half 
mvb squared over d. This is kind of what you expect, right? You, the, if it comes to rest in a shorter distance, it takes a much larger force uh, to bring it to rest over that time. And again, I'm going to go back to my handy dandy little Python window. I'm going to tell the computer that d is two centimeters. And then let's see, print one half times mass times, uh, I called that vf squared over d. And I get a force of 156 newtons. Um, that force uh, for, remember, an apple has a weight of about one newton. Um, so this is a pretty big force to apply to a penny, but that's what it would take to bring it to rest in that short of a distance. So this is 156.25 newtons. Uh, in this solution to this problem, um, I've been a little bit wordier on my video than I plan to be in the end, uh, just because this is the first one. What I want to do in all of these is, in the end, talk through about what, uh, what we did and what we should have learned from this problem. Because uh, that's the whole point, right? That's why we do this. So the idea is that in all of these motions, uh, I have an object moving and I never care about how long something takes. It starts up here. Let me get a pointer where I can write without um, drawing things. I can use my mouse. Um, so here at A, it is not moving. At position B, it's moving downward very fast. And then at position C, it's again not moving. And the work energy theorem will let me understand things about the motions between those points without worrying too much about what happens in the middle. So in part A, uh, we saw that, well, with no air drag, uh, again, there's no air resistance in that part. Um, the only force doing work is gravity. Uh, so the work done by gravity is mgh, which is an expression we will be seeing quite a bit for work done by gravity as something moves through a vertical distance h. We were able to um, solve very directly for the final velocity using the work energy theorem. In part b, now we've got two forces doing work. Uh, the new one is this drag force, and we don't know anything about it, but we can still figure out the work that it does because we know everything else in the problem. Uh, one thing, and, and folks, I'm sorry, uh, in all the confusion, uh, Thursday, I forgot to mention this, that the SI unit of energy or of work is the joule. Um, you can measure lots of different kinds of energy in joules, not just kinetic energy. Uh, we'll learn about that on Tuesday. Uh, and then finally in part C, uh, part C is kind of the reverse of part A. In part A, we knew the force, we knew that the, um, the weight on the penny is mg, and we were able to find uh, the change in velocity. But in part C, I know the change in velocity, I know the force. Here, now, I am looking for the distance, or excuse me, misspoke. I know the distance, now I'm looking for the force. So since I'm looking for the upward force, uh, that is um, the normal force that appears here in the work done by the ground. There it is, and we were able to solve for it directly. I hope this format for solutions uh, will be useful to you. Uh, this one was a little bit rocky. Again, it's the first one that I've done. If you have any sort of feedback for me, um, please send it to me. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to end this recording and record solutions to some other problems. Thank you all.